For today's reading, I would like to look into the book of Ecclesiastes, which is really my favorite book. And I would like to read a text that is found in chapter 5, verse 10, in New Living Translation. Those who love money will never have enough. How absurd to think that wealth brings true happiness. Those who love money will never have enough. The passage is very powerful. You know, I, I, this is a, one of the favorite books that I have in the Bible. Each time I start a new version or a new translation of the Bible in a new language or even in English language, uh, I always start a new Bible reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. That's my favorite book. Each time I start a new Bible reading, I start from that book. And, and the reason I like it is because it, it teaches about the balance of life. It teaches what is important in life and things that are not important. It teaches us, like it says there, there's a time for building and there's a time to tearing down. There's time to sowing, there's time for reaping, there's time for crying, there's time for laughing. There's always a time for something. And, and I feel when I read that book that I gain wisdom each time. And this passage in chapter 5, verse 10, is teaching about money. What is it saying about money? It says that if we love money, we'll never have enough of it. Why? Because whenever we have a little bit more, somebody else has a little bit more. We always notice those that have more than we do. For example, if you drive a car and you buy an Astro van, for example, maybe before you didn't notice other people having Astro van, but suddenly you notice on the road, on the highway, uh, whatever you drive, oh, this guy has an Astro van, that guy. So you notice what they have. So when you increase in your money, you suddenly notice other people who have. And then you go further and notice somebody else. In the New Testament, we have a teaching that love of money is root of all evil. Not the money itself. Money is not root of every evil, but love for money. When you and I make money our priority, we suddenly lose what is really important in our lives. The most important things in life do not cost money. Our life did not cost money. Getting uh, health when we were born, uh, if we have been blessed with health, that was a gift from God. When we got forgiveness for our sins and salvation from eternal punishment into eternal uh, blessing, was a gift from God. It's not something we paid money for. When we got our spouse in our culture, we don't pay to get a wife. When we get our children, we don't pay to get our children. They are all a gift of God. So the most important things in life are, do not cost money. The things that cost less money, like a house, car, and other things, those are less important things. So it's so important that we realize that loving money is a wrong focus for us. In order to indicate or to show to God that we do not love money, what are we supposed to do? I think there are several passages in Scripture that teach us what we should be doing with our money, and I would like to focus on giving unto God. first passage that I would like to look into it is found in Proverbs 3.9. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. In other words, if we are to acknowledge His ownership of all of the funds that He provides us or enables us to uh, gather in our lives, we should give our tithes and our offerings to God. You know, tithes, uh, according to another passage in Deuteronomy 26, 2, should come from the first fruits, in other words, from the gross of our income. Whatever the gross of our income is, we should tithe from that money and give it unto God. It belongs to Him. If we take that for ourselves, Malachi says we are robbing God. And if we are robbing God, we cannot expect God to give us back anything in return. Like we cannot expect a father who knows that his children are robbing him to give them something. He will stop giving because they're robbing until they stop robbing him. So giving unto God the first fruits is so important. Also, we should be giving our offerings, going beyond our tithes. They belong unto the Lord. That is so significant if we want to acknowledge that everything that we earn 
all the wealth that we acquire really belongs to God. We are giving Him the portion that belongs to Him. And as you and I do that in obedience to His commands, we are enabling God to open the gates of heaven, it says in Malachi, to bless us abundantly so that He will give us even greater wisdom as to how we are to use the funds that we have and how we should increase even more. A passage that is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 12 says, For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. In other words, God does not want you to give that which you don't have. He's not forcing you. He's not twisting your arms and saying, I want you to give what you don't have. No. Whatever God has given you, whatever He has enabled you to acquire, He wants you to give a portion from that with a willing mind. Uh, the general guide is a tithe. If we are not willing to give tithe, our tithes to the Lord, then we are not making Him Lord of our lives and our, of our funds. And yet that is so very important. There's another passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, where we read, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. You see, depending on how much you and I are willing to give unto God, if we are sowing sparingly, he says, we are going to reap sparingly. If we sow bountifully, we are going to reap bountifully. So you and my harvest in our lives, what we are going to acquire in our lives, financially speaking, really depends on the seed that you and I are going to give unto God. So if we are to make God the priority of our lives. Money should not be our God. That should not be the priority of our God. How do we make Him the priority of our lives? Through our money? By giving the tithes and offerings that belongs to God so that the kingdom of God can be extended. And depending on our sowing, what we give, we are reaping. There was a tale, a folk song actually, of a traveler going through a desert situation. And as he was traveling, he was looking for water, and there suddenly he found a pump in the middle of the desert. And there was a note saying, there is a water to prime the pump. And then furthermore, it says in the note, uh, let me just find the note here. You've got to give before you get. You've got to give before the get. In other words, you can drink that water that is in the little cup instead of priming the pump and quench your thirst a little bit. So you can drink the seed, you can drink the tithe and offering and quench your thirst and it's gone. Or you can use that water and use it as a prime for priming that pump and then you can have an abundance of water for yourself and to leave for the next traveler. It really depends on what you want to reap and harvest in your life. It is really teaching us that we should be giving before expecting to receive. Jesus actually said in the book of Acts that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So today think about your funds. Think about all the dollars that come into your hands. First fruits, the tithes and the offerings belong unto God. Do not withhold that. You withhold a blessing in your life when you withhold your tithes and your offerings. Give it unto the Lord and make it a seed that will produce a great abundant harvest. Actually, when we read in uh, the book of Luke, Jesus was saying in chapter 6, verse 38a, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. The same point, like the folk song. Give first, and it shall be given unto you.